My guest Julia Cicciniano is an architect and urban planner who lives and works in Milan. She set up the Stipo Italy in 2021 in order to apply Stipo's vision and ideas in Italy. She also works for Amat as an advisor to the municipality of Milan. She has passion for themes such as collective life, mobility, and discovering different ways in which space is used and experienced. And with such passion, she designed and coordinated urban development and renewal processes to promote great street life and focus on human scale. In this episode, we talked about her career journey and observations and lessons she has learned so far and that she practices as a professional. Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. I am Azban Sari, the founder of the organization Peacemakers Pakistani. And I am bringing you the stories of placemakers, artists and professionals from around the globe about how they created an impact and made change happen. You are listening to the Making It Happen show. Thank you for joining in. Enjoy the episode. Yep. Um, hi, Julia. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, how are you and how is it going in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> thanks to you. Uh, thanks for the invitation. And here is a good. Uh, so it's almost summer, basically. Uh, the temperature is quite nice, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh, yes we have summer over here as well and uh, we do complain <laughs> ah yeah yeah I imagine <laughs> yeah yeah okay so let's begin with our questions because I want to know about you um, desperately okay so Julia tell me how did you find your passion for urban planning public spaces and placemaking so um, I have to say it was a a process for me. Uh, also because when I when I started university, I studied architecture, uh, or at least in in my university in Milan, there wasn't a specific focus on placemaking, urban design. Uh, there was only like you could decide between architecture and urbanism. But the the middle uh, level, so the the level that where I'm working now, so spaces, but not on an urbanistic level, more on an urban planning level. Um, yeah, there wasn't really a specific uh, course for that. So I started architecture. Uh, I wasn't really like very very sure about it <laughs> uh, also because i i realized like very soon that my my colleagues in university they were very very focused on buildings and for me it wasn't like this so i thought well i have another point of view um i like to see the the complex of um uh, the general feeling of a of a place so but but i wasn't really like I didn't understand basically from the beginning, and then the last year I attended an um, urban design um, course that was more specifically, and I did a, a thesis on that in Morocco, and that was like uh, an, an enlightenment for me. Like, okay, this is my <laughs> my field, my scale, and starting from that. Um, I started to work in a um, uh, landscape uh, firm, basically, from the beginning. And then as a consultant to the municipality and then in Stipo. And like step by step, I I went more and more closer to uh, urban planning, to participation design, um, to placemaking and, and everything. So I, I really feel that my... I don't know, like somehow I I went to a to a way uh, also that that was kind of a destiny for me. I don't know how to say. Yeah, it it feels true to me as well because uh, mine was a journey as well, and uh, I'm an architect. Stu- I was an architect student, you know, as uh, so I wasn't very much sure about buildings as well because I wasn't very up to the mark in that area. Um, I would get lost in the details and technical aspects and because I used to see things in a vision and I was required to submit the details, you know, so yeah. I can relate to you very well because um, urban design 
uh, course we used to have urban design subject in our um, in our five years program so i used to enjoy that because it was more uh, connected to people to places and a storytelling yeah so and you know the experience of seeing things happening on in with the different people it's not just one person or two people or a family just having experience so i can relate to you i guess that's a good beginning that's a good start that we are <laughs> we started <laughs> on the same page basically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um uh, okay so secondly i love italy i have seen it in pictures and i love i would love to be there someday so i'll take this opportunity of our conversation today to learn about italy so much uh, as much as i can so tell me um, any place attachment story you have with italy milan or you know overall place venice so share that so first of all you are welcome in italy anytime <laughs> so this is the first thing <laughs> um Yeah like for me um I I really love uh Italy and Milan uh of course is my is my home but I I think that I also had the opportunity to be uh born and raised in a in a place that is really matching my yeah my passion also about cities and and so on and for me actually i i grew up in um in a city in the metropolitan area of milan um that when i was younger i was a bit um <laughs> disappointed because I, i would have loved to stay more like in the center now that i'm a bit yeah um more an adult i have to say <laughs> i'm an adult now um i I think I also I appreciate a lot this um in between place. So I I'm in a city, uh but it's not as uh busy as chaotic as the the city of Milan. So it's uh, an in between situation we can say. Um uh, I'm very close also to the all the green uh parts that are surrounding the city especially in the southern part. there is this big um it's called um uh yeah agricultural park basically um so i i really love this uh, in between situation and for me milan um every time was the the place of the opportunities uh there i could study i could uh, go to every kind of events i would like to uh, all the concerts are um like everyone comes to milan somehow and and then there are yeah a lot of other aspects on based on design and on culture so for me yeah milan was really a city of opportunity and Italy is really different like in in every part of Italy there are different characteristics uh but every time we me my friend my family we we go somewhere in Italy uh we are amazed because you you can find something amazing like in in every in every part and i know it's it's like this in every country of course uh but yes th- this is the feeling that i have when i travel in my country and it's also something that was very made stronger during covid because we we couldn't go somewhere uh, some in, in some periods we were also restricted in our own region so i was restricted in lombardy uh, there is usually uh, there are the lakes but there's not the sea so f- for us it was a bit uh, of a struggle in in the beginning but then you you managed to find beauty also in the things that are very close to you and sometimes you just take for granted so yeah covid was also an opportunity to rediscover my own country awesome okay so uh, basically you i would like to say this for first that uh, it, yes that's true that you country might have the opportunities and you know a uh, good place to give the good memories to people but i think that you yourself 
is someone who is looking for the opportunities you know the good part so that's a plus that or you know the applaud that goes to you <laughs> i think because <laughs> you throughout just kept mentioning the good parts uh, that you are seeing in things so that's awesome uh such a great human you are <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. so uh, now i think next question might be challenging for you then uh what were the challenges and opportunities in the, the public spaces um in uh, milan in italy for you and what are your place making goals over there Yeah so um, the challenges um yeah th- this is really personal of course this is my uh my experience in working uh and yeah i in italy i work i'm working mostly in milan so i i have this uh, uh this vision uh for me it, it's a challenge in a positive way in a sense that now it's a theme that comes more and more into the politics agendas and into uh the the ideas of people and so on that is the real participation uh, because sometimes um i have the feeling that um yeah now for example for um a national rule uh once you a public administration wants to do a, a really big investment in uh, in the cities needs uh, by law to uh, to have a participation process in in order to yeah b- before doing the the investment um but sometimes i feel that this is not enough uh because it's only for really big investment and we would need this kind of participation like real participation for everything and and yeah when when i say real participation i say it because um i see that some processes sometimes uh are just uh yeah like vague and not important questions to people just to say uh we did participation we asked citizens if they wanted the pavement in yellow or in gray but that's not the the real questions that's not the real theme that you need to um to uh rise to uh, uh where to involve people mm, so i i feel that sometimes the important thing are not shared with uh communities and this is really really not accept- acceptable for me in 2023 um uh, because we we now know that cities are part of different communities with different needs and uh it's difficult to to take everything into consideration of course but cities are uh the places where most of the people live now in the world so we need to take into consideration all these uh different needs and opportunities because they are opportunities it's, it's not just about uh a, a fight between different ideas it's about creating a place that is really um made to be inclusive for most of the people and and this this thing also comes to my place making goals and i i really feel that we need we need more uh, inclusivity uh, in cities in general and it's also something like very personal for me because um since i'm i'm really young i uh, i really feel the difference between um genderness and it's something that i would like to fight in my personal life and also of course in my working life and the more i go in depth into this theme the more i see that cities are not equal for uh for women but also for the minorities and and so on so this is really really important for me i would like to specialize more and more in this as well as in the um, uh in the climate adaptation because it's yeah it's really probably the biggest issue of 
of our area and you started saying that yeah uh, you are feeling in in these days that is the temper temperature is really hot and there are flooding everywhere and so um yeah i really <laughs> i really would like to to focus on on these themes nice so um yes i agree with you that about the participation and um that made me feel that uh, we are on the same you know all of the people are struggling still about um, bringing people to the table and the for the administration to include people on a very basic level and i think that there is so much to learn for each of us you know from each other on how to start so um that's something i think um uh, for me to land this um uh, you know we can sit on the table and have a conversation about it to how to convince the administration on how to bring you know how to allow people to have it and how to be so transparent with them because definitely politically and um in an administrative way it is difficult to be transparent with people because what i've seen that sometimes we do struggle that uh, we can be talking about things but they are not practically approachable but mm. about the place making we see that um, people do things themselves you know if we have them like there's a, like the way you said that a large things shouldn't be the goal the small things can make huge impact as well so i think this is but this is also a reason that the struggle is because of capitalism right that we want everything huge we want commercial we want biggest revenues uh, in a very mm -hmm. quickest way so i think that's the reason we are struggling right yeah 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 it's also uh, yeah it's a lot about money and also yeah in milan you see uh, uh in the last years there was a like after expo there was a a huge amount of investments of private mm, yeah mm -hmm. paying money to to do investments in in the city and this was really uh a side effect because um uh, then the the prices of the houses are rising a lot and now there is a housing problem uh, mm -hmm. gentrification problems and and so on and the problem i mean is not the investment itself uh, investment is good uh, but if you if you do it without taking into consideration all the different um, people that are living mm -hmm. in a place and if you don't combine uh, as tipo say every time bottom up and top down you you will never find the balance and and that's why there are inequalities and um a lot of people that have a lot of money and a lot of people that have few money and the gap is coming higher and higher every time so uh, yeah i completely agree and also yeah. i completely agree start with small things like everything is made of of small things yeah okay so uh, it's funny but i would like to say because i i want to share that okay i i used to know about isli and you know when is because social media plays a great role i completely you know i just uh, agree with that that social media plays a huge role so i came to know about milan through uh, a movie um it was uh, by uh, one direction <laughs> <laughs> the singers go we have they had a movie over there they had a concert over there so i remember their uh, shouting hi milano so i remember that okay milan is a place that i just searched it and it was a lovely place you know so i think the hype the things that bring hype we are more inclined to them naturally so i think this is the reason why uh, the countries or the cities are investing in hype things and living on the people who are living there um behind because in our in lahore in the city that i live there is also a place where people are living their space their homes because it is being commercialized and there is so much noise you know there is so much activity extreme activity so people are living their houses the old houses which are the charm of the city 
So yeah, I agree with this things that the, there must be a balance. And uh, I think, I don't know, <laughs> there's a lot to think about it, that maybe yeah. even should be shifted to a certain area where the hype can be entertained and people will not be disturbed, you know, commercial districts yeah. like that. So, okay, we have a point to discuss in future. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yes, tell me about Stipo and how it inspired you to apply to Sweden in Italy. So, um, for me, Stipo was very, um, yeah, uh, really inspiring experience. First of all, because I, um, I'm used to uh, here in Milan to work with uh, uh, basically, yeah, only architects and and an urbanist so we are all architects and urbanists with the um, specific uh, sensibility also with the human uh, scale approach and so on but in stipo what really amazed me is that it is really uh, interdisciplinary so there are anthropologists economists urban psychologists and and so on and all of them had a, a really important point of view in uh, looking at the city, in thinking on how to transform the city for people. And for me, it was um, a, a big source of, um, of learning. Also hearing uh, all of them, their thoughts. And because I, yeah, I, I have a, a technical point of view in the end uh, from my uh from my education but i i would like to uh to open more and more also on on these other expertise and so first of all i understood that it is important to collaborate with all the all the the expertise because as we said before cities are very complex uh it's not possible that just one uh professional figure uh works on the public spaces of cities. Um, we need to combine all the expertise possible to make it really, um, yeah, really efficient as well. Um, and also um, it was very, very interesting for me uh, to see their, um, their theories. Uh, they all, Every time, once in a while, they put all the expertise into these um, books that are open source and open to everyone. And for me, it was like, for example, the City at the Eye Level book was really amazing because they were um, put in, they put in, in a theory something that for me was, uh, was a sensation. At, I don't know how to say, like my experience, uh, personal and working experience in cities um, was exactly the same of all the theories that they put inside the city at their level book. So it was like, OK, I mean, th this is a uh, there is a methodology behind. There is a psychology um, reason. There is an economic reason and, and so on for all the things that I experienced. Um, on my personal level. So yeah, it, it also gave me strength on this, from this uh, perspective um, to try to work more on some aspects of my daily job because I knew that they were a theory and not just my, <laughs> uh, my personal sensibility, for example. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of a validation, right? Um, yeah, that's exactly what happened with me while I when I discovered that place picking is a movement, you know, I was just trying to put my ideas or connect into places from my childhood experience and from my adult, from my young adult experience. So I combined that in my thesis and I needed something to prove it that this is possible to execute in a professional manner. So placemaking movement and this depot and, you know, the whole network, their terminologies, their methodologies that help me prove it. So I agree. I relate to you that and the validation that was huge, you know, it was a huge yeah. thing that uh, I'm normal. 
<laughs> first yeah. thing was that whatever i'm experiencing it's a normal thing and a lot of people yeah. are experiencing it so yeah the strength that comes together it's amazing definitely this is uh, we are connecting uh, we are on the same page on ev- on everything i guess <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. yeah, it's a validation. It's a global thing. Like in every country, we face challenges and opportunities, but the the core at the base, like, yeah. is the same somehow. So, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, like you mentioned, that uh, things you were observing in your country, in your country, in your city, and the way you were feeling about this is. So, I would like to know more about it. Mm, right. Uh, so, share your top three most unique and interesting stories, observation, or discoveries from how public space is experienced and used. Because I read somewhere that <clears throat> you in- were inclined towards it more on observing places and you know making a story, defining a story or discoveries. So, share anything that we- you like to share. So. <laughs> um... I I have to say that I am really uh, surprised every time that I see uh, a space that is designed for a specific um function or or maybe is not designed for everything uh that is made full of people because people take the the opportunity to to be in the place and do whatever they like and it's something that I experience a lot for example in italy in in the squares um yeah in the squares you you can see like all kind of activities that of course as, i mean a square is is a space is not uh it doesn't have a most of the time a specific um urban furniture inside or a specific function and you can see yeah um whatever or in padova there is prato della valle there is a really um an historical uh, garden with kind of a river in the middle and sculptures and there is all this grass that is uh, like a flat grass and is really full of people uh, lying on the grass every time of the day and every time i go there i'm like okay this this grass wasn't made for people to lie here but this is amazing and it it's really a, an attractive function and this aspect was really uh, at the at the highest <laughs> of unexpected i would say when i when i went to morocco for my to marrakesh for my uh, thesis and there was amazing because um we started to do yeah some researches before on the islamic culture on the um, story of marrakesh and we we made the first draft of the um, our um, uh, urban design projects and everything and then we went to marrakesh and we realized that people were using this space in a exactly opposite way than we were expecting because of course it was a completely different culture and so people liked a lot to to sit at the um, at the bottom of the palm trees that yeah was completely unexpected for us or then we went to uh, Jamal Fna square and hugely crazy uh, empty space that is never empty like uh, there are like i don't know it's full of different activities anytime during the day during the night and for me this was a really important learning experience and and also to uh, to let the unexpected happen like to not de- over design everything there is sometimes i, I mean i also i have uh, horror vacui uh th- which means that um i'm afraid sometimes to uh to keep empty spaces uh and it- it's something that i do like I- I- every time in-, in my life in every aspect of my life but i'm trying to um, in the in my professional uh design process to uh get rid of my a uh, fear of void and to let the void happen because 
it's really like where people can do something, can take ownership, can decide what to do. So this was really important for me. And as well as um, every time I go to a northern country, I'm really amazed on uh, how they manage to uh, take advantage of public space, um, even though the, the weather is bad, even though it's raining, uh, even though it's really cold. And the Netherlands for me was a very uh, learning country as well. Uh, sometimes in Italy we think that oh, well, today is raining, I can't do anything, I have to stay in my house, and, and yeah, <laughs> my plans are gone. That's not true. Uh, there are a lot of ways to uh, to use and uh, leave public space, even if the weather is not the perfect weather ever. And and finally, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the most important, the most beautiful, uh, story for me is correlated to the Open Squares project in Milan that I'm following with the, um, uh, as a consultant. And uh, it's basically a, a program of tactical interventions in the city that are made with um, uh, co-design, co-creation. And every time we create a new public space, where before, I don't know, there was nothing, there was a parking lot, there was um, just, a, just a, a car lane with, with nothing. You create a new public space and then immediately you see people taking uh, that space, staying there, kids playing on the street. And of, of course, if you do it in a participation uh, in a participation process and every time is is really it's not a surprise because yeah happens every time but every time is a, a new experience somehow and yes these are my three stories it is so awesome you know um i love it and i love that you have learned things from different countries and your experience in those countries as well and how you relate to your country um, so it's a lovely thing because uh, traveling do teach us a lot and we bring home things that we would love to see here. So that's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with me. I loved it. I loved how you were expressing it, how you were telling a story. Awesome. Okay, so I really want to know the answer for this because... Um, this is what I try to think about my city as well. Okay, so Milan is quite a popular city as it's one of the largest industrial centers of Italy with all of its industrial activity and natural beauty. Um, how does the city maintain the character and the hustle bustle and the climate mitigation? Yeah, this is um, a nice question. <laughs> and also something that I... Um, uh, I try to question myself like uh, periodically during during my work uh, because I said um, as I said before um, I see in the in the last year like there was a completely uh, shifting in in the mentality uh, about the city of Milan. So before Expo, yeah, we could say um, Milan was just a city for work and very yeah very industrial city work focused uh, people move to milan just because yeah they need they need to to work and it's the biggest opportunity and yeah on the same time there was also the design and fashion aspect but mostly like correlated to working opportunity and after expo and um uh, the I think there was also kind of a uh, changing in the brand of the city of Milan. So now it's not only the city where you go to work, uh, it's a city where you go to have fun, uh, to search for cultural uh, opportunities, uh, 
and and also a city that is more attractive for tourists, uh, tourists, and and so on. So that's why um, all this uh, shifting idea on on Milan um, started to make it uh, really, uh, yeah, really attractive for different uh, categories of people. And and also, yeah, this is something that can be good, that but something that can be very bad for uh, for the inequalities and the different of opportunities that people can have. Uh, so the the cost of life um, has raised a lot. Um, um, yeah, there are problems in the housing sector. Uh, not only for the very poor um, like classes, but also for the middle classes. So it's becoming, um, yeah, more and more um, exclusive. Uh, but it's also something that I I feel that now is um, um, is more and more visible. So in the first year, it was a process like ongoing and changing and, and everything. I think now we are in the phase of, okay, if we keep on in this direction, we're going to lose the, um, the traditional also core of the city of Milan and we are going to something else. Is this something that we want? Probably not. We don't want to, or at least I don't want to, uh, to um, make like all the middle and poor classes go outside. Uh, it's true that there is an entire metropolitan area in the surrounding of Milan, but people should be allowed to decide whether they prefer to stay yeah, in, in a city in the metropolitan area or in Milan or it's it's not possible to uh to make people escape the city so this is um, this is a really huge thing now uh as well as the the climate adaptation milan is a city that is really really gray uh with a high density in uh, in presence of buildings and um, the use of the um, is that correct translation? The use of the soil? No. Consumption of soil. Um, in, which, in which perspective are you trying to mention it? Like uh, land? The yeah. The ah, yeah. Use of land? Use of land, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but, mm, in, the, in the past years, in the past decades, um, the only way to solve of uh, on like all these new demand of people to come to the city and everything was to just build and now we we are also on the phase that we can't build anymore uh, because we need to preserve our lands uh, and and also we need to um, to change our lands to remove the asphalt and to make more green because yeah as I said Milan is really a great city during summer, uh, the now is becoming uh, like is lasting more and more. Uh, last year, starting from May, there were some days where we had 40 degrees and uh, it is really humid. Um, so the, the climate inside the city is not comfortable anymore uh, for most of the, most, yeah, mainly uh, a lot of months during the year. So um, also the perspective on the uh, on the mobility, first of all, but also on uh, on, on the concept that you put when you do a, a capital intervention. Like before, it was very uh, traditional to create, yeah, these um, uh, stony squares because this is the traditional square in Italy. Okay. We, we can't do that anymore. Now we need to put green, we need to put trees, uh, we need to make the, the soil um, drain the waters. Um, otherwise, we, we will end up that we can't leave public space anymore because it's not comfortable enough to stay there. 
So it, it it's a, a I don't I see that the the mentality is changing and also some regulations are changing and we know that there are these common problems that we need to solve and there are not easy solutions for that of course uh, these are yeah huge challenges uh, but i see that there are um, there are actions both from the political side and both from the associations and bottom up activity side and, and i really like this uh, dualism because it's yeah it's the only way to make things happen if things happens only on one side then it's not going to work so it's a really work in progress situation yeah and the way you were telling it felt like that uh, the progress is being made and it is all in the process and you guys are learning and trying to with th make things change and i really appreciate that milan has professionals like you who are trying to make things change and awareness is a part of it and it was you know um, it was motivational to me as well inspiring to me as well because um, you know it gets frustrating at a point that why nothing is changing uh, as a professional when we know that things are supposed to be in a different way and it's not happening like that and um, the way you were explaining that small steps it has changed in a small steps or you know in a slow process so it was quite good to know thank you so much because this was the, like i mentioned before that i needed some hope or i needed some lessons to relate to my or to make things better in my city so it was actually what i was looking for thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. and okay so these were the questions that were for you specifically and now i'm going to ask you the question that i ask everyone else and it's like a rapid fire so let's dive into it okay so to get tell me what keeps you focused what drives you to your work mm, i i understood that sometimes i need to uh to explore new places and probably it's something that uh, came up also in the uh yeah in, in our talk uh, before for me it's really important to to go to uh, other places other cultures other uh, countries to search for uh, inspiration to see uh, also also to not see for a bit my <laughs> my own <laughs> my own city where i where i work most of the time that of course as i said i love but yeah sometimes you just need to go somewhere else to get inspired by that, that is also basically what, what you're also doing, right? To talk with other people because yet this is really um, what what drives, yeah. Mm, and and also seeing that um, you you can share some challenges and some uh, battles. Uh, with other people that are living in exactly, I don't know, like completely in another place of the world. Uh, but yes, in, in the end, we are all on the same con same planet with same issues and, <laughs> and we are all humans. And so, yeah, this, this, this is, I guess, and, and seeing people, I, I really, I really love seeing people in public space, like uh this is really a passion and and, and every time I, I i see a public space that is really working or or i don't know also that is like a public space to be success successful doesn't mean that is full of people every time also can be really successful for people to relax maybe it's really i don't know without noise yeah i don't know i really like to see all the different uh, aspects and inspiration from all over. Yeah, I understand what you are trying to say. You know, seeing people being together in a peaceful manner, <laughs> different yeah. people with different homes being together, and uh, you know, completely strangers will be peaceful in a place. That's in, that's literally a side, especially in the world which is in, uh, you know, in a in living in a controversial 
there's yeah. controversy everywhere so if we see a, a site like that it makes us happy i agree i i, I can relate okay uh, so share any proud moments of your work life that made you realize that you are on the right path yeah all the um, all the piazza aperte intervention like for for all of them there is a um, like when the intervention is is ready and it's finished and maybe we we have spent uh two days with communities to paint on the floor um then the community partners the associations from the different places organize these inauguration events and this specific moment is when you realize that wow now there are these people that were already here in this neighborhood but uh i don't know they were just in their houses or they were meeting somewhere else and now they are all here they are all together um they are all having fun and every time is really it makes me really full of uh happiness and satisfaction for what i do such a sweet um such a sweet human you are <laughs> actually <laughs> that's what i would like to say okay that's sweet okay uh what were the struggling moments of your work life like really struggling one and if you learned something from that that would be great to know yeah well my my working life actually is not so long so it's relatively relatively short uh but what i learned till now is that our processes our works are uh i mean you work with people so uh, they are organic process uh, it never happened that you plan something and everything go uh, as planned so i if i would uh, draw the um, <laughs> the graphic of uh, <laughs> up and downs in a, in a process i would say that is like this every time then start you you start to go up but there are a lot of down moments um so i i think that downs are really part of the our work and our process there there will never be uh or at least for me now it, it never happened to have a project that is only yeah going well going up so down is part of of uh of life and part of our work so it's good to to take the down parts uh to understand if there was a mistake there is also something that i really love about tactical urbanism for example is that you are allowed to make mistakes because is you you can change you can go back you can say hey sorry i made a mistake i we need to change something and these are complex uh, processes so we are allowed to make mistakes we are not god right um so yes th- this is what i of course now i'm really uh, like uh, peaceful in saying that but when is a w- when there is a down there is a down it's difficult <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> uh, but it's something that i'm trying also for me to internalize to remember that it's like this and we need to accept and learn from what we can learn from hey dog is this was the most positive reply i got for this question <laughs> and it comes back to the point that you as a person looks for the opportunity or the good in things <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's your plus point <laughs> okay so is there any place making mantra that you love to remember while you are working on a project or something yeah and it's also something that i learned uh here with the tactical program and is just do it i am really i don't know also i i think my generation but also the generation after us um we only see people talking every time they make strategies uh, they think about well this is a problem we need to do something okay we we don't want to wait anymore we need to do something so this is the the most important mantra also for working with people um okay the um, uh the listening phase trying to understand the needs uh challenges and so on but then 
start doing something. Otherwise, it's, it's just talking. And yeah, we are really full of talking. <laughs> so yeah, this is my mantra. <laughs> I'm a really practical person. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, nice. <laughs> okay, uh, so do you have any opinion for Pakistan or placemaking in Pakistan? Yeah, um, actually, no, but because I I tend to have an opinion or something when I really know, like when I have a knowledge about the topic. And what I feel about Pakistan is that um, it's a country that, uh, like where the information doesn't go like very freely, or at least um, it's not easy for me to find... Um, uh, the good information sources and maybe sometimes you find yeah like mm, few articles but you you never know about the the source if it's a yeah uh, uh, a source that is really uh, objective and and everything so I I would like to learn more for sure and to find the correct sources to to inform. So maybe it's something that you will help me. You can share with me some good source. Um, but yes, I I would like to learn more. This is the the real answer. Okay, so thank you so much for being honest. And this is actually what I was looking for. You know, uh, the purpose of asking this question is that I want to know that what people are thinking about the country and like I mentioned before the social media plays a huge role and like you said that you don't know the sources are true or the right things are being mentioned so yes I'll keep in mind and I'll share some great things with you inshallah perfect <laughs> so you will have the Thank urge you. to come here as well <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we need to make an exchange. <laughs> definitely, yep. Okay, so lastly, is there any um, advice that you would go to the young professionals who are joining in besides just do it? <laughs> Other than just do to it. The, <laughs> to the young professionals, um, yeah, I would say uh, be curious and, and be open. It's... Yeah, you you never stop learning, and it's also yeah something for me. Um, I know, as I said, um, my working life is relatively short, but it's something that I want to keep in mind for. I don't know till I will be eighty years old. Um, especially for our work, you you are never done with learning. So be curious. Lovely. Thank you so much, Julia. I love talking to you. And it's, you know, it one was, it was like a heart to heart talk sort of thing. Like, yeah. Thank you so much. You are such a generous person. And I love talking to you. And I look forward to more with you, more conversations and more learning uh, ideas and, you know, debates with you, discussions with you. So thank you so much again. Uh, I love the talk and we'll talk, we'll catch up soon again. Right? I also, yeah, I also had this feeling of uh, being at home. So thank you. And we'll catch up. Yeah, for sure. Very, very soon. Great. Okay, so take care <laughs> and bye-bye. Take care. Bye.